Amazon, the last call. Cartography has always fascinated me. To look at a map and dream about the journeys that are yet to come, and remember those that we've already made, is an automatic reaction. But not on this map. This map is on a tray, a tray that would possibly fit into place in a film directed by my dear friend Pedro Almodovar. A certain aesthetics, to say the least, a very particular one. It's a map made of butterfly wings, of the amorphos, of the morphos genus, a butterfly that is in danger of extinction. You should not buy these articles. I'm going to return it right now to this store. We propose other types of wings for Brazil, the wings of birds that fly freely, those ambassadors of the Brazilian skies, and which we are about to meet during this hour-long program. Brazil occupies one half of South America with its 8,500,000 square kilometers. Of this immense live world, we have chosen any given corner, undoubtedly at the right time, the morning bath hour. In this stream in the heart of Brazil, our ornithological expedition begins. Refreshing themselves and us, these rainbow children give us their welcome. Various different bird species bathe in this rough watered jacuzzi, showing us their colors and forms. None of these birds are alike, but they all have the same necessities. Their feathers are their treasures, and must be well taken care of. They are an example chosen by chance of the importance this place has for the water bird fauna, representatives of the bird kingdom in a country that is full of energy. Twenty thousand years ago, the hummingbird was already here. Proof of that is the Pleistocene fossil found in Minas Gerais, 600 kilometers from Sao Paulo. Brazil has the majority of the 320 species that live in all of South America. Miniature acrobats, some weighing little more than two grams, they are called by the Brazilians the beja flores. They are called, among other biological titles, the smallest warm-blooded vertebrates in the world, competing in anatomy only with the European shrew. In spite of this, they are the few birds that hibernate like logs if the weather demands it, and in this, they are unique. South America is a bird continent. A third of the world population lives here. Exactly 2,920 species. A lot if we consider that the total existence on the face of the earth is a bit over 9,000. With large beaks, long or short legs, with eye-catching or dull feathers, the Brazilian birds parade down a catwalk that is thousands of kilometers long to captivate us and make us reflect upon the aspects of biodiversity. Brazil is the third South American country in birds, being topped by Peru and Colombia, in spite of their being smaller in extension. Nonetheless, 1,622 species come and go through the Brazilian skies, 
and live their lives accommodating themselves to the landscape and adapting it in turn to their tastes and needs. Birds are just one of the exponents of the overflowing nature that this part of the world shamelessly exhibits. Animals that will show themselves and that will make our visit to Brazil a sure encounter with beauty in quantity and quality. They are, after all, feathered links of a large chain of which we too form a part, although we may find it hard to believe, and in which there is always time for love. Ornithology is renovated each day by a new discovery. It's not unusual to breakfast in Brazil with the front page news of the discovery of a new winged species. This is a couple. This is the female and this is the male. This species, before this recent discovery, was known to exist only in Venezuela and parts of Colombia, and now has extended its distribution to this point more or less, located in the Jao National Park region. This is one of the largest national parks in the world, with 2,272,000 hectares, a huge and unknown region, in spite of having been studied for the past five years. The discovery of this species occurred very recently, less than three months ago, demonstrates the fact that, in spite of all the hard work, there are still many animals yet to be discovered in this region. It's obvious that the larger our capacity to investigate, the greater number of species that are discovered. But fortunately, the jungle still keeps many secrets to itself. 200 kilometers from Manaus, Dr. Tania Sanayoti begins the day once again with the intention of winning Mother Nature's trust. She and her team from the National Institute of Amazon Research have been visiting this place for years and have finally been accepted by one of the jungle's most timid creatures. With her binoculars, she makes sure that all is well. And then, like always, she prepares herself to become as active as the friend she's visiting. Her work takes place in the heights. We accompany her this time. A camera has never before been witness to her field research, and we, like her, find it difficult to leave the ground. A silent and sure system of pulleys and ropes takes us off the ground and one half hour later after the operation began, situates us at the same level as the doctor's desired object. We are in a Castaña de Para, once again in the heart of the Amazon jungle, but in this case, 25 meters above the ground, and with the sensation of having entered the exclusive kingdom of some tropical aristocrat, we are not and do not want to be superheroes. We're just modest storytellers, and the ascent has defeated us. Javier Suarez, our cameraman, is having a hard time, but there he is, hanging from a tree and holding on as best as he can in order to show us who lives in the jungle rooftop. This is a royal visit. We have entered the territory of the queen of bird life, and we must keep appearances. This is the chirp of the young bird, five to eleven times. Recovered, Javier connects this appendage to his anatomy, which is the camera, and bestows us with this vision. A reward for fear defeated and willpower.
The Hapya eagle, the largest in the world, two meters tall, and with the females weighing up to nine kilograms. This is a lonely chick, totally feathered and grown. Some of its claws are already seven centimeters long, which means that it is prepared to hunt down monkeys and perezosos, its usual prey. It still hasn't decided to become independent and prefers living in its parents' house. The harpias reproduce every three years, and the young ones can remain in the nest up to a year and a half without abandoning it, being fed by its parents, and completing its slow development without hurry. It's a scarce bird. Don't be misled by the euphoria its deep gaze produces. There are only a few endangered couples left in Brazil, and all that we can do for them is not enough.